Hey, this is Sean from Sports Talk Bears. If you get a second, hit the subscribe button. It helps out so much. So let's look at this. Let's get down to business. We're bringing in one of our own here. For our off, for our defensive coordinator position, we're bringing in one of our own, and it might be exactly what we need. I'm actually excited about this. Now that we've hired Shane Waldron at offensive coordinator, we can now focus our, uh, our attention on the defensive side of the ball uh, for our defensive coordinator vacancy. In our first interview, it's with Tennessee Titans defensive pass game coordinator and quarterbacks coach Chris Harris. He joined Mike Vrabel's staff ahead of the 2023 campaign and the former second team all pro that was back in 2010. He was highly sought after around league circles uh, previously before joining the Titans. So he's been a high, a hot item around the league. Um, this marks the second consecutive offseason that Harris is interviewing for defensive coordinator positions and whoever the next Titans coach is, it's not a foregone conclusion that he's going to let Harris leave. So it's not an absolute guarantee that he's going to be available, but I am glad we are being aggressive and getting him right in. This is a highly respected player. As you guys know, he's from our past and I'm glad we're bringing him in once again. Also, he interviewed for the Jaguars defensive coordinator job as well. I think if it's between us and the Jags, we should be able to get him. This is a more attractive position. And also we have so much history with him as a coach and a player. So I think that would be a done deal. We can get him if we want him. So let's go to this Yahoo story. Uh, I want to give credit where credit is due always. And uh, let's look here. We drafted him in 2005 in the sixth round. That seems low, but the fantastic thing on who he was as, as an athlete, he came in and started immediately at safety. He was a huge part of our run to the Super Bowl the next year. It wasn't a great result. I remember losing to Peyton Manning. Let's forget about it. That leaves a burn hole. But um, let's look at this. After he was traded to the Carolina Panthers, he returned in 2010 In 2011 back to the Bears. He totaled 16 interceptions throughout his career as well. Ten of those came when he was with us. He's coached here as well. In 2013, he was our defensive quality control coach. He's then moved on to earn his stripes, I would say, and it culminated in him being the Washington defensive back coach in 2020 to great results. Before that, like he said, like I said, he started here as a coach. He turned to coaching and was on Mark Trestman's staff as a defensive quality control coach from 2013 to 2014. He then spent time with the LA Chargers as an assistant defensive back coach that was in 2016 to 2019 and then he was with the Washington Commanders as their defensive backs coach from 2020 to 2022 and that's what I want to talk about because in Washington the results they spoke for themselves they are top five in pass defense in two of the three seasons with him in control of the DBs Harris interviewed for a job on the Bears staff last year before ultimately he joined the Titans. So we have definitely considered him in the past. This is not a new flirtation. So with Harris coaching the Titans defensive backs, let's be honest here. They were middle of the road when it came to pass defense. They are 18th in passing yards allowed per game. Uh, they had the fewest interceptions, only six uh, pass breakups at 55. That wasn't great. So kind of mediocre in the year last year. Uh, but that doesn't fully tell the story. The Titans, they've been just gutted, and the talent level, especially on the defense, is totally deficient. I want to be clear on this fact. This is a team that just stripped down. They're going to do a complete rebuild. They just fired their coach. So the numbers, they don't fully tell the story here. I don't want to hold them against him. The numbers that I do want to pay attention to are his numbers in Washington, and that shows that he's a very good candidate for our position. So with that being said, why should we want him as our defensive coordinator? Just like our offensive coordinator, he fits the scheme. We're team on the rise, right? We definitely need more parts and we're not quite complete, but we are in fact on the rise. And the last thing we want to do is rebuild the defense from the ground up. Let's not do that. That's what happens when you change the scheme too. Many times you have to drastically change personnel and our defense is top five right now. So let's not do that. Harris, he's a disciple of the Tampa 2 system. Not only he played under it, 
it, not only playing in it under Lovey Smith, once again, <laughs> love you, Lovey Smith. Thank you so much for the first round draft pick. I am always going to be a fan of him because of that. that's why we're in such a good spot. Uh, on top of that, he kept in that system, although a different variation under the leadership of Ron Rivera in Washington. Yet another connection to the Bears. He's well-loved. Rivera is always going to be close to our hearts. He is a great guy and a great coach. <clears throat> so with Coach Fluce at the helm, there's no learning curve, right? Things can push forward in the direction we're already on, and he's immediately an asset on our staff. It's a good get. But the question is, is Coach Fluce, is he going to continue to call plays? By recent success, it feels like he definitely should. Harris would fit into that plan perfectly while also being a guru for our young and talented secondary. And once again, we got to re-sign Jalen Johnson to be the anchor of that. With Waldron previously working under a defensive-minded coach, he'll be fully able to work independently, and that's great. Although what's done falls under the responsibility of Fluce, he's not released, he will have he will no longer have the need to micromanage on that side of the ball. It's not a strong suit anyway, so that's a great get with Waldron. Let's be honest about Coach Fluce. His strong suit, it's linebackers, right? It's calling the defense while providing an incredibly steady hand leading the team. It's an ability he has shown along with all the bumps in the road. He has kept this team steady. You can argue that some of those bumps in the road are of his doing, so that's a different debate. But overall, I think he's a great leader. I am glad that he's still our coach. This might be a great fit. Now we have elite coaching of our linebackers, plus elite guy calling plays. Fluce is an elite defensive play caller. Couple that with a fantastic hire at defensive coordinator in Harris to nurture our secondary into a truly elite unit. This seems like a huge win. It likely has to go this way, though, if Harris is a hire. Uh, he doesn't have experience calling plays during the game. We don't want to fall into that uh, pit like we did with Getsy. Let's not do that. He can coach within his strength. He can also grow, and it seems like a fit. And it's also with an organization that not only drafted him, but celebrates him. It's just a great fit and fluce. He can continue calling plays. That is his strong suit. I want us to consider in continue interviewing. Sorry, I can't talk. I have a cold here. I want us to continue interviewing, but man, he is a nice front runner. I love this. And he's someone to watch since our hiring of Waldron. He was the first guy that came in for interviews when we were interviewing offensive coordinator. Maybe the pattern is that we get the guy that we want in first, and then we look for other guys to see if they knock him off the hill. I'm not saying that's a pattern that's going to hold here, but the first one that we interview due to the Waldron hire, that might be the guy to keep your eye on. Anyways, I like that, how this is starting. Let me know what you think. Bear down, my friends, and I appreciate you watching. Um, it's such a blessing, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.